Once was a land of woe and strife Where the people were bereft of hope They prayed to their gods of might and light To deliver the heroes of old Instead they got Heroes, did you hear the quotes in my voice Of moral ambiguity They may help or may not help you at all Depends on what's in it for them They kick and they punch and they maul and they smash They lie and they scheme and they burn and they slash Succeed or fail, it adds to the tale Dungeons and debacles starts now Hello and welcome to this episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast. We are live on Twitch and hello to everyone out in live streaming land. I am Kevin. I am your host and dungeon master and going around the table here, Talia or Hannah. I'm I'm Hannah and I'll be playing Talia, the human rogue. And John. Hello. Play Lunadus, Elven Monk. Sexy. And Shane. That's me playing Alexander the Human Bard. And Blake. I'm Blake, and I'll be playing Juliet, the Dragonborn Eldritch Knight slash Wizard. And Anna. Hi, I'm Anna, and I'll be playing uh, Vikala Alimator, a Paladin of Love. All right, so last time on Dungeons and Debacles podcast, you came upon a sprite village. Um, where Talia had scouted ahead to try to find some tracks and in the process was spotted by a couple of sprites that wanted to know why she was there. Um, She was able to meet the leader of the sprite village and convince them that they were just passing through and that she was going to go get the rest of her party. So the two sprites, I believe it was uh, Sprinkles and... Honeydew, uh, or Honeysuckle, followed her back to the rest of the party where they discovered that there was a dragon born there and a drow, and they proceeded to freak out. Um, the rest of the sprite warriors gathered around you, but you were able to talk your way out of the situation and make your way through the village. You continued on to the north where, as you reached a clearing, you saw a ship fall out of the sky and crash into this crater with a bunch of other ships. There, you found some old, old shipwrecks, um, some cargo that looked to have already been picked clean, and Alexander was able to find two survivors hanging on to life and was able to uh, dispatch them to feed his dagger. On the way out of the crater, you ran into uh, Prospector Bill, who told you to get the hell out of his hole, that everything in the crater was his. (laughs) Um, You uh, (laughs) kind of avoided a fight there and uh, made your way out of the crater and to the east. There you top some hills, and that is where you find yourselves now. Uh, From atop one of these hills, and you're probably about maybe 50 feet up, High enough up to see over the top of uh, some of these trees, but in the valley that you see below, you are seeing all these like dead trees in like this very specific area. All the trees around it, uh, these dead trees appear to be healthy and thriving, but uh, the trees surrounding this uh, area below you are dead. And you are able to see what appears to be some sort of uh, ruin stone city. And uh, I believe Talia was able to see some glowing lights that were floating around inside of it. And uh, right, so, Party in hey, chat is um, asking me that quick. you missed Seven. Seven is actually uh, on this map, the uh, hills. I didn't reveal the number. That was it. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, should we go down into the dead zone and explore? Maybe that's where the boots are. Um, yeah, that's, that sounds like an excellent idea. We should totally do that. It's never going to lead to our death. And what about the lights? Well, I colored lights, the lights can hypnotize. 
What are you? A cat? <laughs> no, I'm simply concerned that they might be some sort of magical creature or effect that we aren't aware of. I mean, we are in the Fae. It's obviously a magic trick or a creature. Mm -hmm. Can we at least exercise a little bit of caution here then? I agree. We should definitely okay, exercise mom. caution. So what are you doing? How about I we know, leave the cart apparently it's here. getting cold. So we should all have to put on our coats or something. All right. Um, should we... How, I don't know about, what precautions we can take before we explore. What can we do? How about we leave the cart here so we're not weighed bound by it in case we need to book it? Okay. So we leave the cart here. We go down and check it out. And, uh, I mean, leaving the cart here is the biggest thing of caution, because A, it's going to give us away, and B, it'll put us in danger if something happens to the horses. Should we uh, leave someone behind to protect it from trees? No, we can leave Abbott behind. Um, that's a good idea. <laughs> Alright, let us explore on foot this obviously not at all dangerous ruin. All right, so uh, you get down off your horses and you start to walk down this hill. Uh, but before that, you can find some like bushes and shrubs up here that you can tie the uh, the horses off to so they don't run away. But uh, as you climb down this hill, the ruin here is probably maybe a good quarter mile away from you. So as you descend down this hill you're going to find this path through all these dead trees and as you walk through the the trees here are pretty dense um there's maybe about a 15 foot path through them but the uh the trees here um you would not be able to like get through them with like a horse because they're so tightly packed um you're noticing that all the the leaves are off the trees and uh Everybody give me a perception check. Yay. I'm good at these. Fourteen. Eight. Eighteen. Six. A oh, one. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> a good way to open this session. Alright, so uh, Juliet and Alunada, as you're walking through here, you're looking up in the trees and looking around, and you're going to notice that there appears to be some, uh, like, webbing up in them, as if they were created by large spiders. Hey, Vix, I me mean, your friends are here. Look. Ah, that's wonderful. Um, but you're not currently seeing anything that would have made them. Oh, unless something killed the spiders. Hey... All right, so uh, you continue on uh, through these dead trees, and hold on, let me move you over to the next map. All right, so as you get closer here, you are going to see some a crumbled stone wall and a uh, crumbled stone. Uh, it looked like it was some sort of like uh, uh, steps or drawbridge up into this uh, ruined. Um, stone town this uh, this stone uh, like steps or drawbridge and these walls look ancient and they're crumbling and they have these vines and like creeping like ivy climbing up the side but a lot of that has died um, it appears that you know whatever killed these trees may have even killed that too the walls here look to have been pretty tall at one point, but they've crumbled down and, you know, they're probably 10 to 15 feet tall. Um, but you are seeing a path that um, directly in front of this uh, crumbled uh, walkway in the center in front of this ruin. Shall uh, we proceed? Do we have any probably way to... Should. Do we have any way to get higher? Do we have any, like, flying people who can go up there and just kind of scout out the area? 
I can turn you into an eagle. But you'd be as stupid as an eagle. Yeah, drawbacks. But <laughs> Talia could turn into a bat. I could. You wouldn't be too out of place in this uh, setting. Would you like to turn into a bat? You don't have to if you don't want sure. to. Sure. All right, so we'll say Talia's a bat. Awesome. Bitty, bitty, bitty. And I'm going to go uh, explore. Okay. Just uh, go ahead and move your token where you want to move it. Make sure to stay high up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to stay pretty high above everything, and I kind of want to get a better view of what's... Is this a ramp? I, I, I apologize if I missed the description. Is this like a ramp, or is this like... It appears to be in, like, some sort of, like, drawbridge or something. Okay, I want to fly up, up above that and see what I can see from this general area, but, like, 50 feet in the air. Okay, um... See... This would be kind of considered dim light, so what's your... How far can you see in dim light as a human? Well, as a um, bat, you would have bat. that. <laughs> yeah, I would be able to see with, with bat vision, which, contrary to popular belief, bats are not blind. I don't know what DNZ says about them, though. <laughs> uh, let's look it up. I, I'm, I'm Googling... A bat has blind sight 60 feet. Yes. And I would like to use uh, Bardic Inspiration on Talia. Okay. So it's blind sight 60 feet and you're flying 50 feet up? Let's call it 30 feet instead. Okay. Because I want to be able to actually see things. Okay, so move your token on the map and then I will reveal the areas. Um, can I cast uh, Shield of Faith on her beforehand? Um, sure. Okay. So, as you fly past this drawbridge, you are going to fly over top of uh, what have been would have been gates, and uh, as okay. you fly through, um, you are seeing kind of what would have been a, a street. You're seeing some some stone obelisks here, and some uh, bits and pieces of some uh, appears to be houses and buildings that have crumbled. All right, um, gonna fly to the right here. Okay. So as you fly to the right, you are seeing some arches and some crumbled buildings, and you are seeing um, the glow of two of those lights that you saw previously. Okay, interesting. Do they, uh, do I notice if they appear to react or anything? Uh, they don't appear to be moving at the moment. Alright, um, I'm going to fly a little north. Okay. So, you fly up toward this area, and you are basically flying down over top of this, uh, large ruined building. And you are going to see two more of those lights. Um, but as you fly lower, you're going to see the one light that is directly in front of you um, start to float toward you. All right. That's not creepy at all. I'm going to fly away from it. Over to the northwest. Okay. So as you fly over here... You are going to see some more ruined buildings. Uh, give me a perception check. Five. Yeah, you're you're basically seeing some more of these ruined buildings. Uh, you're going to see a large building directly in front of you that has some more of that um, um, desiccated vines that have turned brown uh, on top of it and running down the sides of it. Okay, all right. Um... And you're also going to see the glow of uh, one of these lights, but you don't see the light. All right, I'm going to move a little more north northwest now. Okay, so you're going to see some more uh, ruined buildings up here. Give me another perception check. 17. Um, you are going to see what appears to be the 
desiccated corpses of two humanoids. Oh, creepy. Fantastic. They probably and, um, they're uh, they're right here where I'm peeing. Okay. Um, I'm going to fly a little southwest now, try to get an idea of what we'd be walking into when we go in. So I'm going to fly basically like right there. Um, you're going to see some more ruined walls uh, with that dead vegetation, and you're also going to see another one of these lights. And now that you're a little bit closer to it, it appears to be kind of um, a, a bluish white, um, almost like a, a sphere that's glowing that has like these bluish white flames licking up the sides of it and uh, off the top of it that extends up probably about three inches. Uh, the ball itself is probably about eight inches in diameter and it's giving off this uh, bluish white uh, dim light. Goodness gracious. All right, um, I'm going to fly a little bit further north, and I'm going to go back and rep- after I unveil this area, I'm going to, uh, oh, God. It's startling, right. even though it's just an innocuous blue orb, uh, <laughs> and then I'll go back and report. Okay. So are you uh, flying back to the group? Yep. So you're all standing there, you know, waiting, and you see Talia fly into a bat, or turn into a bat and fly towards these ruins, and she's gone for probably about five minutes, and then you see this uh, this bat come flying back toward you, and then approach the ground, and before it hits the ground, poof, it turns back into Talia. I would rather, instead of poof, that it made an adorable squeaking noise. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree that that might happen. Like she started talking before she uh, <laughs> before she was human. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so we have a whole bunch of orbs. We have some dead bodies. I guess there's not much to do but go in there and see what these orbs do. There seems to be a lot of them. Yep. My guess is they're super friendly. You might be able, or there's some uh, kind of, you know, to learn some magical stuff from them. Uh, Talia, did you uh, describe what the orbs look like? Um, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, everybody can give me a history check. Fourteen. Twelve. Twenty-one. Nice. Talia reads a lot of history books. That's all about. <laughs> uh, two minus one. She keeps on putting Juliet to shame on that score. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, uh, plus five. I haven't rolled higher than a twelve this entire game. <laughs> I just rolled two once, starting out. So awesome. So Talia, as you're describing to the rest of the party what you see here, it finally dawns on you from hearing some old, you know, wives' tales and um, some horror stories back when you were younger that these sound like will-o'-wisps. I believe that's Wills of the Wisp. Will-o'-wisps. <laughs> yeah, in d d it's just Will-o'-wisp. I started typing right. that in, and the first thing that came up was Will Smith. <laughs> nice. <laughs> He's a genie. I should have put he his is. face on all the uh, the orbs. That's interesting. It's a new breed. So, Talia, you would uh, know from the stories that uh, these are the like uh, disembodied souls of uh, some creatures, and uh, supposedly they're dangerous. I will relay that information to the party. So, did they kill everything here, or are they what's left of the things that were killed? Maybe both? Pork Pinalastos. Do the tracks that we've been following go through this dead zone? Do they go around it? What What are we looking at here? I uh, didn't see tracks, did I? Uh, nobody looked. Sheesh. I'm super You're dumb. good at this. Alright, well, I guess there's nothing more to do except go in and... 
do these things talk? Are they friendly? Uh, no, I, I only really got close to like one or two of them and they didn't do anything to me. Well, that's a good sign. You could probably just move past all of them and just not even bother because this place is not friendly. Um, what language would the uh, will a wisp speak? If they even speak? Uh, give me a history check. Five. Uh, you don't have any idea. <laughs> Talia doesn't either. That's a five and a six. Alright, but do I know anything about will o wisps uh, Give me a history check. <laughs> uh, that's 19. a 19. Well done, Shane. Uh, you would know that... Um, these are disembodied souls of uh, those who've died, usually uh, horrifically or tragically. And if they did speak or understood language, it would be the language that they knew in life. Okay. Probably. Yeah. I will relay this to my comrades. Okay. So if they can speak at all, it's Elvin. Probably. Do you want to try and talk to him, Mr. Elvin Man? I could try, but we still don't didn't look around for tracks. Do the tracks that we've been following go through here? Let's 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 look around for that. Let's, I mean, if I go to trouble, we don't need to. Uh, give me a survival check. Hey, Tali, do you want to take a check since uh, you saw my bardic inspiration? Sure. Um, what does the bardic inspiration give me? I believe it's a D8, yeah. That's an 11. Um, I'm you... gonna help them look. Okay. <laughs> this is the last check. I don't trust them. And it's a one. It's the <laughs> third one. Okay, I'm, uh, two of us I'm, I'm not rolling anymore. <laughs> I'm not rolling well, anymore. Right. That's it. <laughs> you have the worst luck. I'm so sorry. Like, three ones in a row. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and a five. Sorry, I had a five. All right, so uh, you're looking uh, around through here, and you're not really seeing any tracks. The ground here is a bit rockier, and there's no vegetation, um, since most of it is died, so you're not really seeing, like, broken twigs or bent over grass, and it hasn't rained here, so there isn't any, like, mud for to make impressions of footprints. Hmm. So, should we go in, or... Can I do a check for tracks real quick, too? <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> I'll, I'll allow one more check. Kevin's like, she had three ones. <laughs> Let's do another one. <laughs> I just, so, can't uh, find them. <laughs> yeah, so it's... The gun. Every, everybody's like, well, look around for tracks, and nobody's finding any. What do, uh, what do tracks look like again? I, I think I forgot. Oh boy. <laughs> Their piece of feet print. I, I was a uh, sarcasm. It's a sarcasm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing? We're on the move. Let's Julian's go gonna on lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how far are you going in? Uh, I think Alunados is the furthest we're gonna go in at the moment. Let's see. Um from uh, here, I should be able to see maybe one orb. I don't know how these walls are, and stones and stuff are set up. You would be able to see up to, like, these walls right here. Um, you're not really seeing... What about this guy down here? Looks like I have a clear line of sight down to that guy. Uh, you would be able to see that 16. one. I would? Would not? I yeah, you it. would, because it's, it's glowing. All right. And you would have long. So I will head over in that direction, and I will say, in Elvish, "Hello." Could we perhaps avenge your death, friend? Give me a persuasion check. This will go well. Oh, I did it. <laughs> Three. God, <laughs> had a feeling. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I mean, as you, as you say that this thing is going to start moving toward you and I'm going to need everybody to roll initiative. 
Why do we let the elf talk? He's the only one that can speak elvish. That's not true. I can speak elvish. elvish. (laughs) (laughs) Juliet, how did you get a point zero eight? I have minus one dexterity. Don't shame me. <laughs> we are doing crit fails all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> I just crit failed on my initiative. Uh, you did not crit fail harder than Juliet, though. Good lord! All right. So, well, the wisp has plus nine to initiative. All right. So, as uh, Leno tries to to speak to this orb. It like floats forward about a foot and he starts speaking and then it pauses for a second and then comes flying at a Lunados and it is going to attack you. Uh, That's a 13. That's going to miss. Yep. Uh, Next up's the Lunados. All right. Um, You know what? I'm just going to punch it. See what happens. That sounds like a real bad idea. Well, I have my quarter staff, so actually I'm quarter staffing it, but yeah. Uh, 26. Uh, that's going to hit. For 10 damage. 25. That's going to hit. For 11 more damage. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a bonus strike. Uh, that's a 10. Uh, that's going to miss. Okay, so no damage there. All right. Um, and now I'm going to uh, just sort of duck around to the other side of this thing so other people can, slow people can get in closer. Okay, so as you hit this it kind of feels like it you're, you're punching through like this, this warm air and you feel this static crawl up your hand as you hit it and you would think that you would do more damage to it but you're not and you are going to take Technically, One, it was my quarter staff other than punching, but I'll assume that uh, right. any melee attack. Right. So you are going to take one point of electrical damage. Ow, guys! It's it's sparky, sparkly. <laughs> it's Chuck Tingly. Uh, next up is Talia. All right, Talia is going to come up and flank this thing. Um. And then she is going to try stabbing it because that sounds like a great idea. The twenty-five. Uh, that hits. I'll do my sneak attack, and then my offhand. A uh, twenty-three and on the offhand. Uh, that hits. All right, four. Uh, twenty-four damage. All right. So as you stab through this thing. Um, you are going to see these flames flicker and dissipate, and you are also going to take two points of ele- uh, electrical damage as this okay. uh, thing flitters out of existence. All right, excellent. Oh no, uh, guys, there are more, but no, they're not that tough. I don't, I don't think they're what killed these things. This place, I think they're what's left over. Yeah, they're the spirits of traumatic people, yeah? Right, Kevin? I don't know that they're traumatic. <laughs> traumatic. Um, so, as that one dissipates, you are going to see this one um, come flying down through this arch and it's going to attack Winterdoss. It's going to try. That is a 26 to hit. That 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 will hit. It succeeded in attacking me. Uh, for twenty points of lightning damage. Holy! Wow! Ouch! Okay, these these things are that tough. They might have done the thing. Uh, next up is Vic. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna go flank the old near here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit it twice. Okay. I have an advantage, right? On each hit? Uh, yes. yes. So, 18 for the fourth strike. Uh, that's gonna miss. 20. I think Great. that's, uh, that 20. Yep, wow. that's okay. Nice. Alright, so, uh, roll your damage first. 
Oh crap, I'm gonna divine smite that. The crits, oh my goodness. That's, um, I think 25 plus yeah. divine smite. Uh, how much is that of, of your sword? Is that 15, the true sword? 15, yeah. the sword, 15 10 sword, necrotic. necrotic 10. And I'm gonna add Divine Smite one second. Wait, unless it I'm gonna is use a spell slot. Dead. Hold on just a second. So the Necrotic's from your Smite, right? No, the Necrotic no. is from the sword's critical hit. Oh. It doesn't affect it if it's a construct or undead. And she is rolling her critical hit uh, smite damage right now. Yeah. Um, okay. I assume I don't get the uh, 10, 10 hit points, right? Is that a hit? Uh, uh, no, you don't get that. Yeah. Um, so now do your smite. Wow. That's an extra 5 damage. That's It's a critical hit. You get double that. Oh, yes. so it doubles yeah. all damage dice. Oh, okay. You have 2d8 extra. Just uh, roll another 2d8? Okay. Uh, 2d8, yeah. Wow. Oh god. <laughs> One. Jeez. Holy moly. Seven. Kevin, I Three ones. you for this. She's wow. like rolling Kevin. nothing but ones here. Uh, it's not me, yeah. it's the program. Uh, what type of damage is that? Radiant. Radiant, okay. It is not resistant to radiant. I am so unlucky today. I had five ones. Five. Almost in a row. Yeah, that's insane. I had one crit, which doesn't do damage. Can type. <laughs> Alright, next up is uh, Nifron. He is going to walk up here and he can't get all the way up, so he's going to stop right here and pull out his crossbow and shoot at it. Uh, that's Why a 14, that? that's going to miss. Uh, next up's Alexander. That's me. I will. Uh, do I have any super cool spells that do anything? Uh, I'll try and shoot with my crossbow and see what happens. Well, but my uh, short bow, yeah. 20 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. 9 damage. So you fire this and the bolt goes through this flame and it flickers out. Nice. Okay, so we need to be careful about getting hit by these things because, oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> they, they whack really... a polyp. Do you have a ranged weapon you can use? Um, I have the magic missiles thing, but that I don't think will be enough to take care of all these things. Not really. So I think I'll just, um, I'll just, um... Hang back, I guess? I'm gonna go ahead and use my ability to heal to go ahead and heal myself. But, so as you're um, talking, um, you're gonna see the glow of one another one of these orbs. Uh, Juliet, you're up. Alright, uh... Let's see, from this angle I can't see it, so... There's an orb over here. I think, wait, wait, wait. Uh, is this the wall, or are these like a connecting thing on top of two pillars? This is, is like a, a, a wall that has an opening. You would be able to walk underneath oh. it. It's kind of like okay, an Okay, gotcha. So or shoot underneath it. From here, I would be able to cast a spell at it, correct? Correct. Okay, uh, Julia is going to cast Firebolt at this thing. Okay. Can't trip, can't trip, roly poly, can't. This is actually supposed to be 2d10 damage, but I think the equation is messed up. So it's only going to roll 1d... I don't know if a 13 even hit. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, so no problem then. Uh, that's it for Juliet. Alright, next up is Luna. Okay, um... I didn't realize we were still in the turn order thing, so I think what I'm going to do is... I think my uh, healing will use my action. And I'm just going to hold back and let the ranged people take care of this unless I have to. So that's going to be my turn. Healing right. and standing still. All right, Talia, you're up. All right. Um, can I reach it for, or can I uh, see it from here? Like, do I have line of sight on it right now? Uh, you don't. Okay. So if I move, like, here I would. 
Uh, where are you? Nope, you still don't have line of sight. Looks like you're on the wrong side of the pillar. You went too far. <laughs> there? I'm just trying to figure out line of sight with this strange construct here. Uh, you would have line of sight on it now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and throw uh, a dagger at it. So 21. All right, that hits. Uh, my sneak attack. And then my offhand. Aww. Uh, it's gonna miss. 10. So, 15 damage total. Okay, and that is with your dagger, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, next up is Vic. Okay. Um, okay. So, this one died, and the rest are too far away. Hmm. Can I dash as an action? I'm gonna. Um, I can dash, right? As an action. Y- yeah, uh, yes, as an action. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and dash over. Over there. Okay. And I'm gonna, as a bonus action, summon a spiritual weapon. Put it uh, right next to me. Okay. Um, but wait, so uh, you see gonna, more orbs. Gonna be like a little bit back. I moved a little bit too far. Okay. Oops. All right. Is that where you want it? Uh, I don't. No. Um, behind me, like next to me. Okay. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. And that's pretty much my turn. Yep. Okay. Uh, Nifron's up. He is going to run up here beside Vic. He can make it right here beside this orb, and he is going to attack it. That is a 14, a 16, and a 15. All miss. That's bad luck. Uh, next up is this orb number 13. Which is going to move over here and attack Talia. No. Do remember you have a uh, plus two AC right now, I think. Oh, what do we have? Bless it. Shield of Faith. Uh, Shield of Faith. Shield of Faith, yeah. Is that yep. concentration? Yes. Oh, so it's gone. Oh, what? Your spear? Oh, sh- Nice, thank you. I forgot. <laughs> uh, yes. I forgot the spirit concentration too. Yeah, so if that spiritual weapon's concentration. Oh, wait, actually, isn't. no. Spiritual it isn't. weapon is not Oops. concentration. Oh. It just lasts one minute yep. straight. Nice. I was looking at the whole person. Yep, that's right. No concentration. You still have a plus two AC. Okay. Huzzah. I'm gonna, Sweet. I want to put a little marker on your token uh, to show that you currently have a concentration spell up. Okay. Awesome. Um, so where was I? Oh, okay. So this or 13, orb, that can tell you. Yeah. Uh, that's a 10. That's going to miss. So it's going to fly at you, Talia. And you're able to duck out of the way. And it flies over here. And then you're going to see it disappear. The hell? Interesting. Uh, next up's Alexander. It's not ominous or anything. Yeah, Anybody have the ability to see invisible shit? Um, I will move here. And would you say that I have line of sight of orb six? Um, That's you no, know, you're because it's kind of through a a ruined building support right there. Okay, uh, I got. So I'll just move here and then. Uh, I can't really do anything. Let me see. Yep, Hold on a I second. guess that's it. Oh. I gotta let the cat in because it's meowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You gotta let the cat hey. in because it's the right thing to do. God. I think he makes his cat roll if you can get in or not. <laughs> <laughs> Cats have advantage on charisma checks. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. All right. Unless it's um, the Sphinx one, like the one we talked <laughs> for as disadvantage. Fucking hairless rat things. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Uh, so is that the end of your turn, Alexander? Uh, yeah. All right, Juliet, you're up. All right. Where was the last uh, position the orb was seen at? Over here. Over. Okay. By the way, if you just pinged Kevin, I didn't see it. I don't know about anyone else. I pinged. Uh, I right here, d- uh, directly below you, Luno, is the last place you saw it. Okay. Still not seeing your pings. Yeah, actually, I, figured, like, I, saw, I saw Juliet's and I saw John's, but I did not see yours, Kevin. Okay. Uh, Juliet is going to move north. Um, so she is in line of sight of Orb 6. Would I have line of sight here? Um, to orb six. Let's go ahead and save from there. That would be maybe half cover. Great. I'm gonna cast magic missile at it, so I don't even have to deal with that stupid cover shit. Oh. And I will cast that at second level, so this will do an extra one d four plus one. So that's what ten points of damage. Uh, 14 points of damage. Okay. And that is going to be it for Juliet. All right, next up is Luna. Okay. No more of this cowardice shit. I'm going to run around here. Very limit of my movement. And I'm going to bite the electricity and smack the hell out of this thing with my stabby staff. My quarter staff, not a stabby staff. First attack, 21. That hits. For 9 damage. Second attack, 11. Uh, that miss. Okay. And now, let's see. That was with Damn. your quarter staff, right? The 9 points of damage? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to spend a chi point for uh, my dancey step to get so that they have disadvantage when trying to attack me. Okay, patient defense? Yes. Alright, that's uh, the... Is that it? Technical term is dancey step. Yep, that's it. Alright, Talia, you're up. Alright, Talia's gonna kind of follow uh, in Luna Ness's footsteps, but only move like here. So she should have line of sight on number six. Uh, to I say if you could move right here, you it wouldn't have cover right now. It's like a half cover from where you are. Okay. Then I will move there. Oh, uh, no. and yeah. I will, I will throw daggers. I I forgot that I have to like basically uh have my mic inside of my mouth to be able to be heard. <laughs> no. um, I'll throw I'll throw daggers at my uh at that orb six. Why do I always have Prince when doves cry stuck in my head when we're playing? I don't get it. I don't know. That's weird. That's uh, super weird. Uh, that 19 will hit. Excellent. Uh, sneak attack and then offhand dagger. Uh, actually, uh, you don't need the offhand dagger because that thing has dissipated as you throw your dagger through it. Do I have line of sight on orb 5? No. Dang. Okay, that'll be... Alright, is that it for your turn? Yep. Alright, next up is Orb 5. It is going to attack Nifron. Uh, That's an 18. That's going to hit for 13 points of lightning damage. And then it is going to disappear. Uh, Alright, next up is Talia. What? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Orb 5 went, then Talia, now it's Vic. Vic. Okay. <laughs> oh, whoops, I joined the canvas. Uh, whoops. Okay. As far as we're concerned, we're out of combat now, I guess. Because we can't see anything else. Hmm. Although, Talia did see more things. I do see Orb number 9, no? Oh, no, there's walls. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna move up. Oh, by the way, standing where we are. Yeah, I was just about to ask if that. Um, we should like yeah. cover a heck of a lot more map now. 
Like, I see very well in the dark. Um, can I roll perception to see if I see all the stuff around me? Um, yeah. That I should be able to see? Well, right now, since you've moved up, you're going to be able to see um, basically uh, three of these orbs. Four. Uh, you're also going to see one, Seven. two, three uh, skeletons. Uh, Lunados, you're also going to be able to see two skeletons near where you are. So if I run back to the cart, grab some salt, and light these on fire, that could kill the wisps too, right? Uh, God damn it. Supernatural rules. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm going to pass my turn. I move my movement. Okay. I'm just gonna move well, wait, my what spear, about your spear next to me. By the way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go with my spear. Yeah, right um, next to me. Next up is Nifron, who looks kind of confused that this thing just disappeared, and uh, he's not going to do anything. He is going to um, move up here near Vic. Doesn't quite have the movement. Well, he's going to take a dash and move up here beside. Uh, this orb that behind this building or it's not really a building it's probably only about three or four feet tall um, he can clearly see this orb and he's going to go up and uh, that's all he can do uh, next up so as you're all standing there and like looking confused like you know where did these things uh, disappear to um this orb that you were fighting earlier, Alexander and Juliet, is going to reappear and attack Alexander. Uh, orb 13 is going to attack Alexander. Ah. That is a 17 to hit. That hits me. For 20 points of lightning damage. I guess. Go. Uh, you're up next. Uh, I will... Your longsword does extra radiant damage if you get hit. I will try and stab the orb with my dagger. Okay, uh, remember you got a plus one to hit, hit and damage with it. Yep. Thank you for the reminder. Eight. Uh, that's going to miss. And I'll pass my turn. Juliet, you're up. Cast another level two magic missile at orb 13. That, that. Uh, 12. 11 damage and that's it for Juliet alright so you hear Juliet in this spark or not Juliet Alexander he's like ah and then you spin around and see that this uh, will-o-wisp has reappeared and has attacked Alexander so you turn around and let this magic missile fly and it slams into it and you're going to see it stagger back a little bit alright next up is Luna Okay, um, orb seven. Gonna smack the crap out of it with my magic staff. Okay. That is a 21 to hit. Uh, that's gonna hit. And, it, ooh. Crit! Mm-hmm. Uh, that obviously For another 12 damage. So, All right. I'm guessing it's dead. Um, so that's eight points with the staff, and then another 12, 12 points. points on the crit. Yeah, okay. crit 20 total. Uh, no, it's still up. Roll the uh, crit chart. All right. 20. Oh. <laughs> uh, roll it again. 50. Oh. I was over. I was too. What? If you get like 320, if you get a 20 on the crit chart, then you have a chance to just kill something outright. So you mm. get I didn't get that chance, like, roll uh, crit. Oh, we forgot to roll crit for Vitalia? It was because it was yeah. dead. Oh, yeah. Well, oh. but crits can also give you bonuses. So oh, that's true. For her. My and bad. Oh, I'm next time. In any event, I got a 15 on this. Alright, so uh, target is uh, loses 50% of the current HP if target is below their 10% of the maximum HP they're instantly taken to zero. Um, so actually this would have uh, 
yeah, this would take it to zero, so it is off the field. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I still have some move left, so I'm going to go ahead and come over here and flank with my front. And just in case, I'm going to go ahead and spend another chi point for patient defense. Okay. Talia, you're up. All right. Um, Talia is going to turn around and come help out with orb uh, 13. I had to try to read it, sorry. Um, so I'm going to try to move around Alexander like so I don't go within range and flank orb 13 uh, with Juliet. Okay. Um, and then she will make with the stabbing uh, 24. That hits. With a sneak attack. And then her offhand is a 20. She has advantage. It's definitely not a crit fail. <laughs> uh, so what's it look like as uh, you uh, stab this flaming ball to death? Um, I just... She's gonna sink her dagger in and um, I guess it just dissipates because it's a ball of fire. Like lightning <laughs> so it fire. pops with a tiny scream of tortured, wailing, lost soul. Yeah, what John said. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else you want to do? Um, not right now. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, so this thing winks out of existence, and Orb uh, Five is going to reappear behind Vicalia. Hello. And uh, it's going to attack you. Uh, that is a 13. Nope. All right. Uh, you're up next. If I try to um, roll it like a basketball, does that count as a legitimate hit? No? Um, <laughs> uh, it would be flavor. <laughs> It'll be flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna smack it with my sword uh, twice, like on the head, like bonk it. That's gonna okay. be like a uh, <laughs> basketball. And hopefully, in the last bound, the spear's gonna pierce them, just pop them. It's gonna scream like, no! And die. No! Forcing. 22 on the first head. Uh, that hits. 24 in the second head. That hits. 18 on the third hit. Uh, that's going to hit too. That's 18 damage. Are you sure? I think. Oh, no. No, I don't think so. Oh, the spiritual weapon. Okay, I thought it was good. I thought okay. you were going damage. That's my bad. Can I go ahead and roll damage? Nice. Oh, God. Ah, <laughs> uh, you had to say something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I'm pretty sure you just... Uh, I don't know. That's 23. I don't yeah. Know. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you smack down on this thing and the the flame uh, splits in half and then dissipates. Oh, what about the basketball thing? Okay. It, it splats down on the ground and what's then it look like when... into a puddle and then dissipates. So what's it look like when you uh, kill it, man? Like, you take the um, flat part of the uh, blade, like the, um, not the sharp duck, like, yeah. Flat of the blade, yeah. Yeah, the flat of the blade, exactly. And you smack it down, and like, it bounces to the floor, and you smack it down again. It's like two hits, and the spear like, pops it in between, and it goes down again, you know? Okay. Uh, you are going to take six points of uh, lightning damage. And I need you to make a uh, concentration check. Okay. Um, how do I make one in roll 20? Just make a constitution check. Yep. Not a save, okay. uh, check. With advantage, right? Yes. You're a um, caster. Yeah. I'll do it. Oh, yeah, you, you pass. And I'm not 20. <laughs> yep, you pass. Uh, but you are going to take six points of electrical damage. Speaking yep, of, of which, uh, Alunidas, 
Yes, you were going to take. I forgot that I took damage. Yeah, five points of electrical damage, and Talia. Yep. You take one point of electrical damage. Sweet. Oh, and does Vic get her check deep roll twenty crit roll thing? When did she crit? She crit it a few times ago, and we didn't roll to see if she got any sort of. Oh, right. oh yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and roll a crit table. Just oh, roll d twenty. Two. Of course. That is compromised defense. Target takes an to one penalty to AC until the end of the attacker's next turn. Due to defenses being damaged from their expert attack, which doesn't have any effect. Yep. It's like I either roll twenty, eighteen, or so, or I roll one or two. It's amazing. Um, we also rolled it. Do you want to uh, do anything else? Move your spiritual weapon? Or move yourself? It should have been next to me already, but um, go ahead and move near orb 4 and my spear too. Okay. Alright, knife runs up. It is a 14, a 22, and 11. The 22 will hit for 7 points of damage. And he's going to take two points of electrical damage as he stabs into this thing. All right. Uh, next up is Alexander. That's me. I will uh, use an action to dash forward, and that uh, that allows me to double my distance, right? Correct. But it's also going to take your action. I will use. It's a move 60 feet here. And then, uh, pass my turn. All right. You rolling dice is really ominous, Kevin. <laughs> I think he's putting nine, 14 and 11 on the, uh, table. All right, let's roll the thing. Turn order. Uh, Juliet, you're up. Yep. Quick question, Kevin. Uh-huh. When we're forced to fight the evil versions of ourselves, will that be the good versions or the super evil versions of ourselves? That's a good question. It's very meta. I think it, it is I, very meta, but it is a good question. I, th- I think it would be the good versions of yourselves. Okay. Juliet's going to dash Wait. north, and that's it. But isn't, like, Vic's good version is this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for off, she does good. I mean, that's her good, you know? Well, it, you would be chaotic good would be your opposite. I thought it would be like a uh, Oathbreaker Paladin is my uh, opposite. No, we're talking about like Shadow Wink here. We're not talking about yeah the Mirror Universe versions of ourselves, things like that. Yeah. You would have a goatee. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, a male version of Vic. She would hate that. Oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> yes. I would draw that. Yes. Alright, Luno, you're up. Alright. Really? That quick? Alright. Um, okay, I'm... No, wait, I just went. Didn't I? Okay, I guess not. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and attack Orb 4. My quarterstaff. That is a 12, no, 26, because I'm flanking. Uh, that'll hit. For 11 damage. Okay. Uh-oh, looks like I got a crit. Uh, yep. Uh, For 16 more damage. Okay, it's that's going to be enough probably. to take this thing out. But go ahead and roll your crit table. Is it a 9? Nine? 9. Probably nothing. Uh, your attack hits so hard it dazes your opponent until the end of your next turn. All right. Okay. So it's dead, and um, I am going to do nothing. I'll wait for the orbs to come to us. All right, uh, Talia, you're up. All right, so I measured it out while we while I was waiting for my turn, and I am going to be able to use my bonus action to dash here. So I went from nice. Oh yeah. I went from there to there, and then from there to there. It works out. I, I, this is the square. I was just over one. Anyway, I'm going. I'm going to be here. And uh, do I have line of sight on the orb eleven? Uh, yes. I don't have range on it though. That's forty feet away. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess this is this is. Uh, you know what? Um, since I can't attack anything, I'm going to use this action to cast Mirror Image. Um, All right. So, yeah. Those will stay up for a minute. All that fun stuff. Their AC is 13. Uh, how far away do they appear? In the same square as me. Oh, in the same square as you. Okay. Um, sorry to interrupt, guys, but I really have to go. Okay. Um, do play my character well, Kevin. Thank you very much, guys. I'll be back next time. Okay. Uh, it was very fun. Definitely Thank role you. play this shit out. All right. Yeah. See ya. Make sure <laughs> you re roll mess up time. all the webcams. <laughs> oh. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's all right. I'll, I'll yeah. fix it. next week. Thank you. See ya. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, so uh, you cast that. Uh, next up is Vic. Uh, Perfect time. She is going to move up here and attack Orb 11. She yeah, has actually, D20 plus 5 for her greatsword. Bringing up her character sheet here. And she gets 2 D6 plus 2 if she damages it. Possibly 10 necrotic. No, no, no 10 necrotic. That's a nine. That'll miss for a first. Yeah, time. and then a sixteen. That's going to miss as well. She's going to move up uh, the spiritual weapon and attack with that. That is twenty plus three. Fourteen. That's a miss. Uh, all right. Uh, that's all she can do. Next up is Nifron. Going to run up here and attack the same one Vix attacking. It's a fourteen, a twenty-three, and a twelve. The twenty-three is going to hit for. Uh, nine points of damage, and he is going to take one point of lightning damage as he stabs into this thing. All right, next up is Orb 14. These things are super fast. It's going to uh, oh wow peer up behind uh, Luna. That is a 17 to hit. That'll miss. Damn it. <laughs> uh, next up is Orb 11. Is going to attack Vic. That is a 20. I believe that's going to hit her. Yep, that'll hit uh, for 13 points of lightning damage. Uh, next up is Alexander. My time to shine yet again. Inspirations. I will use a bonus action to inspire Vicala. And then I am going to uh, try and shoot the orb 14 with my crossbow. Well, my short bow. Uh, that's going to miss. I haven't even rolled yet. I thought you said it was a 14. No, I said I was going to hit orb oh, 14. Okay. <laughs> my bad. I still missed, but it's the <laughs> principle that counts. <laughs> and you said you gave uh, inspiration to Vic? Yep. And that's all I got. Trying to find one of these icons that says inspiration to me. Put a little flag, why not? There's a little spot on their character sheets. Yeah, but I'm not going to remember it unless it has a <laughs> token icon. Just not going to happen. Alright, uh, next up is... Is that it for you? Yep. Okay, next up is Orb 8. Going to come flying in behind yeah. and attack you, Alexander. Uh, that's a 27. You got me. Uh, 18 points of lightning damage. As I'm it, at uh, 26 HP. You guys are paying attention to this fight up here to the north, and this uh, orb snuck in from uh, the southwest here and came up behind Alexander and smacked him in the back. Uh, Julia, you're up. Butt. All right. Um... Yeah, gave him the chuck tangle. Lumidas, you... You are good with dexterity, right? I am indeed. Okay, I think this will work. I don't know, actually, if it will, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I am going to cast Thunderstep, and what that lets me do is I'm going to grab onto Alexander, we're going to jump 90 feet, uh, up to 90 feet, in a random, in a not random direction, in a direction of my choice, and then a ten-foot circle is left behind that explodes 
with 3d10 thunder damage. So that will hit orb 14, orb 8, and I believe a Lunadas as well, which is a real damn shame. Um, it's okay. And it's actually a constitution save, but it's only oh. thir- DC 13. So uh, I'm going to move over right next to Talia. Uh, Alexander, can you move yourself over here somewhere adjacent to me, but behind me, please? Uh, move to the left. I saved. Like over here, so things can. There you go. So orb uh, number eight can't half reach damage. you. Uh, yes. So it's going to be 12 damage to Luna and the other two Willow Wisps. I assume that's what they are. Um, it required a Dex save. No, uh, Constitution save. save. Oh, that sucks. 13. Yeah. Uh, what was the DC? Oh, well. DC 13. 13. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. It was? Do you say Constitution? Yes. Okay, they both failed. But All they. Right are naturally resistant to thunder. Well, shit. I should have thought of that before I did it, but at least I got Alexander out of danger-ish. To thunder or to lightning? Oh, yeah, it's thunder damage. It's not lightning damage. I don't know if that matters. Uh, Thunder, thunder they're resistant to it. Okay. Uh, Yep, so so uh, that's it for Juliet. And what was the damage? Uh, 24, but halved, it's going to be 12. Okay. If they made the save. And then have, because, well, it's 12, because they're resistant to it. And they failed their save. Okay. Uh, next up is Luno. Okay. I am going to go ahead and beat the ever loving crap out of Orb 4 for a little bit. 22. And that hits. For 9 damage. And now, second attack. 24 for 11 more damage. Okay. Uh,. You kill this one. Mm-hmm. My staff makes it splish splash into nothingness. And now, um, you are going to take three points of lightning damage. Mm-hmm. Let's see. As for my move and bonus stuff, uh, first up, I'm going to go ahead and come up here behind Orb Eight and do my patient defense. All right. And that's it for my turn. All right, Talia, you're up. All right, I am going to move up uh, and flank Orb Eight, and um, I'm going to stab it. I feel like I need something new. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a crit. Nice. Uh, I'll uh, go ahead and roll a d20 for that. Okay. Uh, Nineteen. Uh, target loses 20% of current HP or crit damage, whichever is greater, but not both. So, uh, roll your damage for that. Uh, nine. I think the, the, pl- yeah, the nine, the plus two is the, the crit part of that. Right. Um, so what was your total damage? Nine. The total damage was nine. Oh, on the crit, the two more. is the crit. About sneak attack. Yeah, and sneak attack. Oh, yeah. You get double on that too. Oh. Oh gosh. Uh, so double sneak attack. Yep. So roll it again. Holy yeah, it's dead. <laughs> nice. Rogues, man. Single attack. You just did twenty-seven to thirty-six damage. Yay! And that wasn't even with the bonus. <laughs> no. Uh, right. And then I have some movement left, yes? Yep. So yes, I'm going to move up have, a little bit. Yeah. And throw a dagger at um, Orb 11. As long as that's actually Orb 11, because I can't see the number on it. Uh, yes, Orb 11. Okay, excellent. Whoops, nope, that's not what I wanted. Ignore that. <laughs> I misclicked. Uh, that's a 12. Uh, that's gonna miss. Alright, and that's my turn. Alright, next up is Vic. What happened to her character sheet? <laughs> oh, there it is. Alright, so she attacks twice with her great sword. That's a 19 and an 18. The 18 is gonna miss. Or, uh, the 18 is gonna hit, rather. Uh, the spiritual weapon is gonna miss. Um, she is going to do. 
2d6 plus 3. Have uh, 13 points of damage. No, I think that's an attack roll you just did. Yeah. Uh, I clicked on the, the damage. Yeah, I don't know how that it. works, but but that was a d20 plus 5. So just it's 2d6 plus 3 for her damage. Okay. I'll just roll that then. I mean, 13 would be really nice, but... <laughs> so, uh... Nine points of damage. All right, it's still up. Nifron's up. And she would have taken damage from electricity. Uh, good point. She takes four points of electrical damage. Uh, okay. I also would have. Oh yeah, that's nope, true. You're from a distance. No, oh, wait, no, no, from, yeah, for eight. Step. Yeah. She would have to to get the. Uh, that's four points of electrical damage for you too. Okay. Uh, well, Nifron. First attack is a crit miss. Oh. Uh, second attack hits with a twenty. Uh, yeah, and then the third attack is a crit. Well, you should check and see what the crit fail did to us. Yeah, I'll do that one first. Because it prevented the later attacks. Let's see, that's a three on the crit chart. That's uh, you take disadvantage on attacks and saves. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> That that sucks. Till the uh, end of the round, or till the end of the fight. Uh, t- uh this yeah, till the uh, until the end of the encounter. Wisdom save DC ten Oof. ends. Uh, so that second attack will still hit with a twenty. Uh, the third attack, which was the crit, is going to miss. So he's going to do nine damage to this thing, which is enough to take it out. Our emotions were all over the place on that one. (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, So next up is... We think we're out of it because we can't see Orb 3. I mean, we're aware of Actually, Talia would be able to see it. Be able to see the glow from it. But uh, not see it directly. Okay. So, uh, Alexander, you're up. Welcome. Ah! Uh, I will move here. I would have line of sight at work free from here, yeah? Uh, yes, you would. Okay, I will attempt to shoot him with my uh, short bow. Or her, you don't know. 15 to hit. Uh, that's going to miss. And with that, I will pass my turn. Uh, Juliet, you're up. All right. Uh, Juliet is going to move up. Uh, is this thing buried in the sand, or is it like... It's a ruined piece of uh, wall that's probably uh, at its highest point three feet tall. At so does it obstruct my view? Juliet? Uh, does it, it obstruct does... my view? No, you're taller than it. Does it obstruct my view of Orb 3? Like, I can see Orb 3. Is that correct? Or correct. is that rock in the way? Okay. Uh, I'm going to fire another magic missile level 1 this time. Or 8 points of damage on Orb 3. Okay. And that's it for Juliet. Look at all those ones. All right. Next up is Luna. Okay. I'm aware of Orb 3. It's aware of you now, too. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to prepare. I can, like, if it comes up to me to attack, I can prepare attacks in return. Uh, you can uh, You can only prepare knife. one attack. Okay. okay. So I will prepare my uh, quarterstaff smacky smack for it if it shows up. All right. Uh, it's all you. All right, I'm going to move towards Alunidas. I'm going to move here. I'm going to move right here. Um, uh, do I have line of sight on the orb? Uh, I'll say you do. Okay. Um, I can't really do anything with it, though. 
because I don't have range. Because my what's my my range on my daggers is only thirty feet, right? Right, but you can throw at disadvantage up to I think is it one twenty? No, that can't be right. Let's say sixty for now. Um, I don't. I'm not gonna take disadvantage. I don't think. Instead, I'm going to look real quick. Um, ah, I'm going to cast Toll the Dead. It's a cantrip. Okay. Um, so it has to pass a wisdom save. Uh, let me click. Hold on. I have a macro for it. DC 13. All right. And that is oh, but it's necrotic damage, which it doesn't take. That was oh, dumb of me. Oh, well, it doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't say it doesn't take it. The sort of life stealing specifically didn't work, I assume, because it was an undead. Um, it is. But necrotic resist- damage still damages undead. Yes, it, it's resistant to it. Uh, so okay. it failed. So it's going to take half damage for that. Excellent. All right. Wait, which which did you attack? Orb three. Orb three is damaged. You get d twelve. Oh, is it? Yeah. But it gets damaged. Oh yeah, your magic missile. Yep. Uh, so I'm just going to roll a d twelve um, instead of this d eight damage. One second. Okay. Two. <laughs> you get another D twelve. Oh two right, it's 12. two D twelve. I'm I can Sorry, read. No, I swear. You're, you're doing all right. Come on, come on. Five. Okay, it takes five, five damage. <laughs> Halved. Halved. All right. Is that it? Um. Wait. It's. Yeah. That's it. All right. Uh, next up is Vic. Uh, this is... She's gonna dash. So she's gonna get right up on it, and that's gonna... Uh, well, she's gonna move her spear to... It can't dash, though. Right. So. That's as far as you can get. Uh, next up's Nifron. He is going to dash. And he can get right there. And he can still attack. He can. That <laughs> that is uh, that's a crit, and then a crit fail. Nice. Wait, remember he has disadvantage, or did he save? Oh, uh, oh, actually, well, he has to do that at the end of his turn. So the the first one would be it was a twenty nine. It was a crit with uh, advantage and a twenty eight with disadvantage. So he is going to hit with that. Um, but he is going to take the crit fail on the second attack, which is, uh, you, you damage your weapon and take a negative one penalty to attacks for the duration encounter until you can repair your weapon out of combat. Um, so, first of all, he's going to hit this thing, which he whiffs through it, 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 it's looking like it's having trouble holding itself together. Uh, he's going to take three points of electrical damage, and then he is going to try to save against this uh, disadvantage, which he does. Huzzah! Uh, all right, next up is Alexander. My time to shine through and through. I'm going to try and hit this orb three with my short bow. Fourteen to hit. Uh, that will miss. And that'll be my turn. Pass. Uh, Juliet, you're up. Alright, fire another level 1 magic missile at orb 3. Doing 11 points of damage. So, what's it look like when you take this thing out? Uh, it's a flurry of magical bolts. The first two, boom, boom, hit it, and then the thing explodes in a shower of sparks as the remainder just smash into the wall behind. Nice. Alright, so... Currently... You are basically out in the middle of this ruined town, and you are looking around, and everybody give me a perception check. 
I'm good at those. Hypothetically. Ooh, I got uh, two nice one. pairs of eyeballs right here. Natural one. Nineteen. Uh, okay, so Luno and Alexander, um, you're going to look behind you, and you're not seeing anything, but you're going to look up here to the uh, to the northwest and to the west, and you are going to see glow uh, coming from more orbs. Also, uh, Talia saw them earlier. She knows they're there. That is true. I, I, I did actually see them earlier when I was flying. But that doesn't mean they stayed there. But they're undead, so they don't know me there. So, let's go ahead and tell them, guys, There, there's more over to the west. North. Let's see, west, northwest, a half-west-ish sort of thing. And they don't appear to be moving. They're just sort of sitting there. We seem right. to have cleared a path through the ruins. We could ignore them if we wanted to. Exactly my thoughts. Yeah, they don't seem to be doing anything to us unless we do something to them first. Or they see us. So let's go ahead, I guess, go back, get the horses, just move on through this area, and pick up the trail. Well, let's finish clearing the back of this area so we know we're passing through. And also, I'd like to inspect the bodies to see how old they are. Because if we're following tracks, these could be the people we're following, and then sure. we're stuck. All right, so, so what do you want to do first? Our... I'm going to go back and get the horses, and others can look around here. Okay. So we'll say that you leave, and you're back in probably like maybe 20, 25 minutes later. Um, Juliet, you said you want to check the bodies? Uh, yeah, just to determine how old they are, if they have anything on them. Okay, uh, give me... Let's just do, like, a general, uh, medicine check. In that time, Talia 13. and Vic will lose their two hickeys. <laughs> um, it yeah, I can dismiss my duplicates. Okay. Their shields, their shield of faith, inspiration, stuff like that. Um, so, Juliet, it doesn't take a, a cleric to figure out that these bodies are pretty old. Um, the ones that you're seeing over here to the uh, northeast, um, some of these appear to be years old. Um, some of them appear to be, you know, decades old. Um, the one that you're currently in front of, it looks kind of desiccated. Um, but isn't completely skeletal, so you think maybe it's been here more than a year. Um, some of the other bodies that you saw here, uh, up here, and over here um, where the rest of the party is look skeletal. Okay, cool. Uh, do you want to search around further in this area, or just where you've been to so far? Um... I think we should search around further, right, guys? No skin off my nose. And do you want to do you're, investigate? You're not here. You're busy getting that cart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to try to... Are you just trying to look at the condition of the bodies, or are you trying to loot or see what they've got on them? Oh, I wanted to see if there was anything on them as well. Okay, uh, give me like a general investigation check. Another 13. All right, so on the ones that you can currently see, um, can you see where I'm pinging? Yep. Okay. Um, so these bodies that you're seeing here, um, they appear to be um, elves, um, all male. They appear to be wearing various... Uh, uh, degrees of armor they all appear to be wearing some sort of uh um you know c cloaks that have fallen apart um some of them are wearing leather that's kind of started to fall apart you're finding uh this one right here is wearing some chain mail that or a chain shirt that has rusted uh, it looks much older than the rest um, they are all carrying bows 
which have basically fallen apart at this point from disrepair. Um, they all are carrying knives. None of them appear to be magical, um, judging by the rust that are on them. And um, a few of them are carrying long swords. There is one long sword that you find uh, on this one right here um, that would normally you would think be rusted, but it appears to be in pretty good condition. Uh, this body here looks like it's probably been here for more than a year. Cool. Uh, then I guess Juliet will go pick up that less damaged sword. Okay. And between these, you're going to find um, 375 gold pieces. You're also going to find right. um, various uh, rings, necklaces, uh, and bracelets um, that are made of gold and silver, which are going to be worth 625 gold. Perfect. We can split that at some point. Um, Unless none of us noticed it, in which case you'll probably keep it for yourself. Why? What? I wouldn't keep it. Well, okay. I would manage the money myself, maybe, so <laughs> you guys don't irresponsibly spend it, but I'm not going to not let you guys know. Um, while you're um, over here by this body right here, give me a perception check. It's an eight. Uh, okay. Even with an eight, you are going to see something uh, glinting up here to the uh, the top. To the northeast of you, and you're going to see uh, what appears to be a skeleton that is up here, and a big snake. <laughs> yeah, uh, as much as I am tempted to go and check out the shiny thing, we really should get the group back together and see what everyone else is up to. Get the band Does back together. Does Juliet say anything about the shiny thing to the group? Because Talia will 100% Oh, yeah, absolutely. She'll say, you know, there's a shiny thing up there, but I don't want to go alone. T Talia's going to come over here and say, I I'll go with you. Let's let's go find out what this is before just walking in, because she's a dumb 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, let's go see. And then she just runs in. Yeah, 12-year-olds are chaotic and squirrely at the best of times. And Tali will never encounter the best of times. I could turn her no. into a literal squirrel. <laughs> that that sounds chaotic. fun, but not like a good idea. All right, so Says you. <laughs> uh, squirrels are adorable. I think she'd be all for it. So as you uh, approach this thing, this shiny glinting thing that uh, Juliet saw over here in the shadows, as you walk between these two ruined buildings you are going to see that this appears to be a skeleton that's been here for decades. All the, the flesh has uh, since rotted away. Any clothing that it may have uh, worn at some time have uh, rotted away. But you are going to see um, it is, in one hand, carrying a short sword um, that appears to be in pristine condition and a tower shield none of us can use that I don't think or That's none not of us true. are set up to use it Mikala is she's using a greatsword oh I can use it then You're using I mean it doesn't match up exactly with my skills but it's not like I can't use it Done. and it would give me a boost to my AC it might be You're useful using a helmet. You, you'd have to, you could switch over to another weapon I suppose yeah I don't have to I can switch over to sword and shield it's not like I use my halberd that much anyway. <laughs> Either way, we should loot the body for, for goods. Sure. All right, so uh, that's what you find on the body is a short sword and a tower shield. And I'm really curious as to what that snake-looking thing is. Okay, um, so there was a short sword and a shield, correct? Is correct. there a helm, too? Uh, there is, but it uh, doesn't appear to be, like, functional. It's rusted. Gotcha. And how is Talia dealing with all these skulls just lying around? Uh, she's definitely going to take whatever is left um, of the, like, she's going to take the, the helm off and try to remove the skull from this, this skeleton. Okay. 
Uh, Since it looks like it's in decent shape. You go up and, and touch the helm, and this skeleton basically just falls apart. Like into dust, or like into I can take the component with parts. Me? Sweet. I'll uh, I'll grab a tibia for Abbott to play with as well. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that falls apart too, just too dry and crumbly. No, it's just when she touched it, uh, all the connective tissue that was holding it together oh, isn't see. there anymore. So when she touched it, it just basically fell apart into bones. Blake, for your next art project, Abbott trying to catch Akalia's spiritual spear thing. Treating it like a stick. Alright, I I guess I will try that. I actually have another <laughs> comic idea that I'm going to do, so I'm doing that first, but yeah. Alright, what else are we doing, guys? We okay, should just look around for tracks. Uh, oh. Apart from the ones we what kind of What kind of skull is this so I can add it to my inventory before I forget? I don't know. Uh, give me a medicine check. <laughs> oh, God. There, You said the bodies were all elven, right? Eleven. Um, this appears to be humanoid. You guess it's elven? It's kind of hard to tell because there's no ears. What are the shape of the orbits, the eye sockets? And look at the cheekbones. That's how you can tell. Um, <laughs> not with a medicine well. shake of her leather or something. All right, so uh, that's that's all. I I mean, we should check around for. Or sorry, I'll I'll eat my mic. I apologize. We should check around for uh, footprints and see if we can go deeper into the city. I guess. Look for the people we're ostensibly trying to follow, so we can get the boots. Booty boot boots. Yeah. Would we have uncovered anything when we went over there to check out the the skeleton? Like, would we be able to see more of the map? Um, hold on. That's a good point. Stand by. World leader, standing by. Oh, dead vines. Not snakes. Is that a temple of some sort? So, as you're over here, basically what you're seeing is a wall uh, that extends up probably about uh, 10, 15 feet on the back side of this near this... Uh, arch that you're seeing over here to the northwest. That's about as much of uh, the arch that you can see from where you are currently. Oh, this this looks promising. Ooh, giant cobweb. Hey, Vic, do the drow have cities in the fey? Not in the fey, you silly wood elf. Well, I'm just wondering, because, you know, all the cobwebs seem to be dead, but if they had been here when the elves were alive, that would that would be a reasonable inference. I'm assuming I've gotten back by now. Yes, you're back. Yeah. So, well, I don't know about you guys, but I think we should go towards the arch with the ominous... Giant spider half of a, uh, Yeah, half of a giant spider web. I mean, uh, the way through the city. Maybe Vic should go ahead, see if she can befriend the spiders. Not a terrible idea. She does or, follow Spider Queen Lady. You silly human, you afraid of spiders. Yeah, I'm not a. Uh, me and spiders are not on the best of terms. Yeah. All right, so yeah, that's uh, Vic is going to walk up here to this archway. And what you're going to see is uh, there is an opening here in this archway that's probably about 20 feet across. You're going to see these stone pillars that rise up about. 40 feet in the air. Um, the top of them uh, doesn't meet together where the the top round part of the arch would be. It has uh, fallen at some point. But uh, what you're going to see in the middle of this ruined archway is this large gray spider web uh, across the, the top of it uh, that reaches all the way down to the ground. Is the cobweb intact or torn down toward the ground? Uh, it appears to be intact at the top and torn at the bottom. So, people have passed through, or something has passed through. Good Let's point. inspect the ground at the base of the arch for the tracks of the people we are following. 
All right, give me a survival check. Survival. I'll help him out, give him advantage. Oh, he doesn't need it. <laughs> 17. Uh, okay, so you start looking around here, and you are going to see the basically the same footprints uh, that you saw back at the beginning of this trail from the people that you were following. Um, there's a little bit more of a sandy area here and not so rocky, so you're seeing some of the footprints here, and it looks like they pass through this arch. Um, there appears to be uh, a lot of movement on the other side of here. Um, like, um, give me, give me just an intelligence check. Eleven. Um, there appears to be a lot of movement of these footprints over here on the other side of this archway through the spider web and then you see some footprints that head off to the northeast when you say a lot of movement do you mean like a confused milling around or they were moving fast or? um it, it it appears like there's more volume of of footprints here okay so there was like a you know like five footprints and paths that like went through this arch and then shortly after the other side of the, the arch the footprints spread out and there's more of them it looks like they were walking around this area for some reason you can't really guess why alright I'll just let people know uh, yep it looks like the people we were following came through this arch and went on through although something weird happened on the far side I can't really tell what they maybe they camped there I don't know but somehow they got through the city unmolested. I or guess we should go that way. Perhaps we should. For the boots. For the boots. All right, so uh, are you done with the ruins here? Are you done exploring? Are we heading out the, uh, the gate? Unless we want yes. to finish exploring the city, which means killing more wills of the wisp. Yeah, no, I'll skip that. Yeah, I'd rather just move on. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we'll move on. Take a short rest so that people can recover and move on. All right. Well, that sounds like that's probably a pretty good place to end it right there, then. Booyah. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dungeons & Debacles podcast. If I could ask a halfling size favor, give us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way to support us. New episodes come out every Monday, so make sure to check your podcast app. If you have an idea to make the podcast better, tell us about it on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out our website to see all the maps, lore, and characters at DungeonsAndDebaclesPodcast.com. And now a word from our fantasy sponsor. The hammer gets you what they owe. Have you or a loved one who is a practitioner of the magical arts been injured by lead-based ink? I'm Hamish the Hammer, and I can get you the gold you deserve. I'm a wizard, and I need nimble fingers and a sharp mind. Lead ink took that from me. There was no warning of the side effects of lead on the bottle, and someone must be held responsible. Going to the town guard or petitioning the leader of your village takes too long when you need gold now. My professional team of negotiators gets to the root of the problem and persuades them to do the right thing. I don't get paid unless you do. Send a raven with a message about your problem to Lestain, care of Hamish the Hammer, for a free consultation. The Hammer gets you what they owe. Um, Kevin, can we make um, a rule? That, like, uh, John is only allowed to post, like, one link a day. <laughs> <laughs> I think John that's uh, beneficial to all of us. Yeah. If you check oh, roll 20, you'll see I posted a few links. Sexy <laughs> dragons, dragon milf, and Chuck Tingle. <laughs> it's a game. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't see any of that. It's in roll 20. It's in roll 20. Oh, okay. That's not even the same thing. That's just actual pornography. <laughs> it's wow. not even what we were talking about.
Wait, well, talking about what does Juliet look like? She's a sexy dragonborn, apparently. But that's just Daenerys. No, that's no, Dragon whole, Milf like, was dragon because uh, Anna mentioned Dragon Milf. So I Google Dragon <laughs> Milf, and that's what I found. Oh, I, I didn't see I didn't hear about that. <laughs> I was only with the dragon's fucking cars uh, debacle. And this is why the internet should be destroyed. <laughs> yeah, right, you. <laughs> <laughs> How right. dare you try and shut down my dragon's fucking cars community? Maybe Kevin can delete those links. Keep our uh, monetization. <laughs> Do we have uh, monetization? What? Oh, no, we're, we're not monetized. That. We're fine. Keep us from getting an NC-17 rating. <laughs> we're we're already on adults only kind of deal. <laughs> I, I cleared because sure, my- there's lots of cursing. <laughs> I uh, cleared my chat, so uh, it may be just on Blake's end or your end. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I just uh, need to uh, clean my eyes. Well, I needed that link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I cleared it off. That's good. Yeah, Thank of you course you off. cleared it off. Uh, you can watch the, the stream if you want. It's right there. Now, I don't know why you keep spamming Chuck chuck tingle but we have to focus on these weird <laughs> lights that are in front of us <laughs> yeah weird lights back to the back to the campaign guys all right all right the music you heard on this episode was shadowlands one horizon eternal terminal unholy night and ghost story by kevin mcleod at incompetech.com license under creative commons by attribution 3.0 license creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 3.0.